So today a Peltier fridge power supply which might not be worth fixing, but let's try to fix it anyway. Here's the simplified schematic of it. In one of my previous videos I diagnosed all the components in red circles to be bad. It was also difficult to figure out this chip is actually this, based on its top code. I ordered some replacements. And this was a cascading failure. The electrolytic capacitors on the secondary side failed first, open a circuit. The lack of capacitance loading the transformer destroys the transistor by high voltage overshoots. Here's the transistor which is shorted, and this destroyed some small components around the transistor plus the control chip. This is a flyback switching power supply controller. Now let's replace or substitute all these components and see. And of course there is still some chance these chips are fake. Just some random chips from the internet. This makes it more adventurous. But let's begin with the switching transistor on the primary side, high voltage MOSFET. It's on a heat sink. You have to desolder the whole heat sink because I can't get to the screw otherwise. And that's it. The transistor is JCS8 and 60F. Here's the data sheet, a 650 volt and a channel MOSFET. A low figure of merit. The on state resistance times the gate charge. That's an interesting metric. The more powerful transistor, the lower the on state resistance. But this typically brings a higher gate charge, so the gate is harder to drive. Harder to quickly charge and discharge. So if both are low, it's actually quite a good transistor. High intensity discharge lighting and fluorescent ballast lighting. This datasheet probably wasn't written this year, was it? Continuous drain current when it's hot 8 amps. The number rating is a useless number, it's never at 25 degrees Celsius. And the on-state resistance is 0.82 ohms. Here's the switching times, the capacitances, the gate charge. I found some close enough transistor. This is from some trashed power supply. 600 or 660 volts. 9 amps, 0.75 ohms. Of course the on-state resistance the lower the better. Here it says at 100 degrees Celsius 5.7 amps, but it should be enough. And the on-state resistance actually is lower. Also the gate capacitance is lower, lower the better. The switching times are in a similar ballpark. And also the gate charge is lower. The old one was higher. Again lower is better. Here's the new transistor. Let's put it on the original heat sink and let's put some heat sink paste on it. Now the new transistor is on the heat sink. I should probably replace the current sensing resistor before the transistor goes back in for easier access. Exploded 0 0.36 ohms. Let's just botch something to get out of what I have, close enough. That's the new resistor and this thing is for batteries, for the internal resistance of batteries, but surprisingly it's also very good at measuring very low resistances. 220 milliohms nominal, 150 milliohms nominal, and in total it should be about 360, 370. That's virtually exactly the right one. This thing also measures capacitor ESR. The horrible resistor botch is in now. It's probably just going to blow up again anyway. Now the transistor goes in. Well, it could be also a better idea to replace the components around it before the transistor is in place. The 75 ohm gate charging resistor, it's not critical. I can put, for example, 68 ohms here. And the gate discharging resistor is 8.2 ohms. Again, not critical. If I put something like 10 ohms in it, it should be fine. And owner of some SMD resistors here. A 68 ohm resistor. Let's dissolve the blown one here. And the 8.2 ohm resistor. And the diode. The 68 ohm resistor goes into its place now. That's absolutely the right tool for it, isn't it? And the other side of it. And the resistor is in place. The 10 ohm resistor goes here. And the blown 470 ohm resistor has to go out. And donor of a resistor. And the resistor's in. And diode from a donor. Goes here. Now the chip has to go in. And this might be a little bit tricky, but definitely not impossible. And this side. Once more this side. I pre-clean it with a screwdriver and then using ethanol and a toothbrush, of course. 
That's the area after the cleaning. Would you actually tell this chip was soldered using a bloody 100 volt amp soldering gun? Just look at it. You don't see any shorts on this side. That's the other side. No shorts. Verify it using a multimeter. So the chip is dealt with. These three resistors. The small diode, the transistor, the current sensing resistor. Just these capacitors are left to fix. 1000 micro 25 volts. If 1000 micro 35 volts, let's put them in. Now they're in. The original capacitors, both of them are bad, but just one of them is bulging actually. And the interesting thing is also that the bottoms of these two capacitors are not the same. Despite everything else looks the same on them. Low ESR. Well, no longer. Now that every bad component I could find is replaced, it's testing time. Let's first try it with a 60 watt lamp in a series if anything goes wrong. This would limit the current. No short, some voltage appeared here but it goes down. Maybe I have to jump or something to start it. Do I have to simulate some NTC thermistor? Hell yes! The LEDs are lighting up, of course they under the studio lights. And it produces 11 volts. A 12 volt 21 watt lamp. Well, it's always better to use a lamp that's not blown as a test load. And it works. This one actually lit up because it was too much load to operate with this resistance in a series. Now a 150 watt lamp in a series and it can run loaded. The voltage is stable. Not sure about this lamp. I have no idea what's the maximum current of this. It's shutting down with this one. Also these lamps have quite an inrush. Let's better use a test load. The resistor has to be in for it to activate. And let's go up. Half an arm up. One arm up. Two arm ups. Three arm ups. 3.5. Four arm ups. Now this one is glowing. That's too much current for this. Now it's shut down. Not a powerful enough lamp for this test. Let's try a 200 watt lamp up. It's making four arm ups. 4.25 and that's the maximum of my test load. And it still works. I'm not sure it's supposed to supply more than that, so let's not go any further. Of course this one cools better with the things vertically. It seems to be working. The diode is warm. The transistor is just slightly warm. It's always a brilliant idea to touch a live heat sink, isn't it? And the voltage on the terminals is still 10.99 volts. Here it's lower because of the wire and the port resistance. Using a crappy USB port to connect it. It seems to be working well. Here's the lamp, obviously, and the board on a thermal camera. The inrush limiting NTC thermistor is actually hot here. The transformer about 54, 55 degrees Celsius. The diode, 55. The capacitors are about 45 degrees Celsius. This one is cool. And there is a link in the description to this thermal camera and other tools used in this video. And further reducing the resistance of the resistor, simulating the NTC thermistor for temperature sensing in the fridge, does not increase the output voltage, so this is probably the maximum it can supply. Is this just on off or continuous? It actually seems to have some continuous region to it. But the region where the output voltage linearly changes with the thermistor resistance is narrow. And some oscilloscope measurements. That's the switching MOSFET gate, and it's drain. It's switching at about 52 kHz, loaded at 4.25 amps, and it seems to be a continuous conduction mode. Let's reduce the load. And at about 4 amps, it's starting to get into a discontinuous conduction mode. This is just one amp. Back to 4.25 amps. And that's the MOSFET drain again, but now together with the current sensing resistor waveform. That's the full load. Let's zoom it out and let's reduce the load. And now without the lump in a series, which skews the primary voltage. At full 230 volts, the maximum peak voltage drain to source on the MOSFET is about 438 volts. So there is enough headroom with a 600 volt transistor. Now with the full mains voltage it actually seems to be always in a discontinuous conduction mode up to 4.25 amps. With full 230 volts at the input it never enters the continuous conduction mode. Here you can see the voltage overshoot when the transistor turns off. 
and here's the ringing, because the energy in the transformer runs out before the transistor turns back on here. The power supply is working again and that's the end of the video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing, supporting my channel on Patreon or using the thanks button, in proportion to the value you received from my videos, and big thanks to all of you who already support me. You make this channel possible.